What an ugly day it is today. It's gloomy and it's raining, but it's the perfect day for me to give you the five things I hate about my momentum. I've got an itch I can't scratch, I'm missing a piece that completes a whole part of me, an open wound scar to see. Everybody come here, gather round, welcome to the freak show, the best in town. What the hell's wrong with me? I don't get along with anybody, honestly. I've been living in my own head constantly, thoughts jumbled round, think I need a new lobotomy. So the first thing I hate, and this is very important because when you have a camper, the goal is to bring everything you can possibly need so you don't have to go buying it at your campground. The first thing, storage. Outside storage, there are only two, and if you opt for the generator in this camper, it would only leave you with one. The first one is on the driver's side, and this is where your generator would normally be. This is where I keep all my hoses, my cables, wheel chocks, tool bag, as well as other docking essentials. But the compartment is just barely large enough and if you're not very neat or organized, you'll end up finding yourself pulling everything out just to find what you're looking for. The second is on the passenger side. And it does have a little bit of added height, but because of how narrow this compartment is, the storage can be a little bit difficult. This is where I store all my extension cords, my brooms, my mops, supplies, and even fishing rods. But in order to stock neatly, I have to use storage bins, which can be a little bit of a hassle when I have to get something that's packed at the bottom. So trying to bring along more than the necessities or docking essentials can be challenging. That's the number one thing I hate about this camper. The second thing I hate is probably the most important to some of you cooks out there, some of the wives or maybe the male cooks, is the kitchen. For well, the kitchen counter space, there's just, there's just no prepping space at all. You have the sink, some small space, then the stove. That's it. We have to use the coffee table and even sometimes the dining table if we're prepping a big meal. Or if there's more than one of us trying to do something in the kitchen at the, at the same time. And in fact, it can be worse if there's anyone doing anything else there while you're trying to food prep or maneuver your way around or uh, just trying to get a little bit more organized while you're in that space. Um, if you have guests staying with you, um, chances are that it's gonna be even worse because the space is so small and condensed that you know, someone trying to walk back and forth, maybe to the restroom or to the bedroom or to the dining room, you're gonna cross paths. Um, there's, I think, enough space in the cabinets, um, top and bottom, but just not enough prepping space for food. That's the second thing I hate about my camp. Before we continue, let me just say thank you for watching my channel. If you like what you're seeing, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. And if you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. And hit that bell while you're at it for uh, future notifications on upcoming videos. Then that leads me to the third thing. It's kind of connected because in order to get to this, you have to kind of go by the kitchen and the dinette which is the third thing I hate about this camper, access to the patio. Now I love the rear patio. The design, the look, the ambiance, and of course the ability to back up into any site with a view 
and just enjoy the scenery. In fact, I bought this camper specifically because of that. Having those benefits come at a cost. To be able to really enjoy the patio, you have to include the three seasons doors. And that can be an additional cost of around $3,000 installed. And then getting to the patio can be a little work. If you have bed set up, then you'll have to, I guess, fold up the sofas uh, back, at, uh, back up so that you can get them out the way and uh, tell whoever's laying down to, uh, to get up, which can be a little inconvenient. Um, if you have it set up as a dinette, then you have to still tell someone if they're in the way to get up so you can squeeze between the sofas and the table in order to then get to the doors, which you still have to slide open to squeeze yourself outside. Uh, and of course, that can be inconvenient. Um, it, uh, the only way that that setup makes sense is if you have both the beds all the way up and maybe you're doing a couple's camping where you just have the whole back open, uh, maybe with the, uh, you know, maybe with the, uh, the recliner chairs that, that come with this camper and just the table, and then you'd have access in and out to the, to the patio without too much of a hassle. The fourth thing I hate, and maybe for some of you it might not be as important, but for me and my family, we like to pack and make sure we have everything we need for a camping trip, which is inside storage. Other than the kitchen, there really isn't much. The cabinets opposite of the kitchen are there, but they're small and they're hard to reach without stepping on a stool to get up there. Um, I'm 5'11", and it's a struggle for me. The bedroom is really the only place where you have some space, but there's no, no space under the mattress, whereas your typical camper has a fold-up mattress that has storage. This particular camper doesn't. The cabinets above the bed are inconvenient to get to and the drawers are a bit on the small side. And in fact, if you have anyone staying with you, there's no place for their things at all unless they're bringing bags and then their bags will be in the way. Of course, taking away much needed space. So, storage, there's just, there's just no storage at all. It's very limited. I pack um, bins in the, in the back of my truck to, to bring anything extra. Um, and in fact, if I have guests, I pack bins for their clothes just so I can stack them and keep them a little bit farther out the way. And of course, that brings me to the fifth. And final thing that I don't like about my camper, the bathroom. The bathroom is very limited in space. When sitting on the commode, you're in the corner of the room between the two doors and facing the wall. If you have any laundry bags, then you have even less space, less leg room, since there's no other place to put it. But right in front of you, facing the wall. Also, getting out of the shower to dry yourself off can be tight if you like to stretch your arms out. Also, there's an air vent with an on and off switch on the wall, convenient, but you still need to manually open the vent, so you need a stepping stool to reach it. There's a vent in almost every room, in fact. There's one in the bathroom, there's one in the bedroom, and there's one by the kitchen. And you need a stepping stool for all of them or you won't be able to reach them. Um, having a switch on the wall is convenient. But how convenient is it if you still need a stepping stool to open the vent or close it in fact? And that's the five things I hate about this camper. I love this camper. 
but you you you, you got to be realistic when you're buying something um, um, there's always gonna be something that you don't like nothing is perfect but as long as you love the good things that's all you need thank you for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one